Welcome back to the channel. Sorry if the lighting might come across a little bit yellow, but I assure you I'm um, healthy. It's not a sign of my complexion. The window kills the light sometimes on the camera. So, uh, August update. Uh, where are we? What's been going on? Um, from your point of view, probably not a lot as far as the channel is concerned. Looks like there's not been a lot of content. Um, however, there, there's a awful lot on the go in the background. I'm trying to film a load of stuff uh, to have it at a point where I've got lots of videos up on YouTube and then I can just sort of stagger them out so we get continuity because I'm getting annoyed myself at the fact that um, I'll set a load of uploads and I'll do some build videos and I have lots of things going up on the channel and then one thing happens, I get slowed up, I don't get the output and it sort of declines. So. Um, my intention is to have quite a lot filmed to start weekly videos for a prolonged period. Um, not put a timeline on it, but the hope is for it to go on rather a long time. So that's what's happening to explain. Um, there's, a, there's a lot happening in the background. There's a lot of videos to go up. I want to kind of get sort of 10, 15 videos before I release them. So I'm ahead. That's, that's the idea is to get scheduled. So what I'm trying to say is rest assured there's stuff coming. And once you start seeing build videos and, and videos coming, um, they won't be stopping for a while, they, they just come out weekly. So so that's the idea. I've been meaning to do this for years and I, I either film a load and then get excited and then release them and you get sort of four uploads in a week or um, I start filming them and then something happens and then the build video stops and you don't get the last part and that sort of happens. Life gets in the way as you can imagine. It's, uh, it's a hobby, it's meant to be fun. So. Uh, bear with me, rest assured, I'm doing it at the right time now. I usually do this as we're coming out of winter and then I get busy, but, but going into the autumn, uh, I've got plenty more time now, so uh, lots of exciting ideas. There's lots here that I'm not showing you that I've already done, um, which I'm very happy with, so uh, stay tuned and, um, you know, we shall all get something out of it. Uh, with that said, there are some things I can show you, so I've just filmed a kind of uh, post build review talk down of a kit that we mentioned a while ago so that is the Airfix Wellington it's just been finished um, the Coastal Command version so um, I've actually got enough content photo wise uh, to be able to put this up as a photo build so I'll compile all of that over the next week and um, you get that one I'll take some actual good pictures of it as well and that one was really built for me get me back into it coming out of uh, summer, I had quite a busy time from spring into summer so um, that was a nice one just to kick off with, no worries, nothing to nothing to kind of build it for. It was inspired by a group build that was going on on, on Bayes on Tim's uh, website, the Coastal Command group build but it wasn't entered for that because it puts timelines on things. Um, so that's that one, that will be the first one you'll see uh, relatively soon, so that's interesting. Um, nice kit, nice build and, and, a, and a different finish, so I'm happy with that, just finished that off this afternoon. Um, speaking of group builds, well, last time we chatted, we were talking about a group build, um, Battle of Britain group build. So first kit for that one is um, about to get some paint this week, uh, so it's Battle Britain bog standard hurricane. Um, grey on the underside as we were talking about it's a bit of a different colour but obviously on top is dark green dark brown or dark earth sorry uh, with a black spinner so that's all sorted just prime that now got that one up together over the weekend um, looks like I've got some ghost seams although the primer might actually have been a little bit thin so I'm not sure there I have to check those um, can't feel anything but I can see the line but I know that the primer I was running out so I made it a bit a bit too thin but I've got to sort out the seams on the joints of the horizontal stabilizers and that's it. Uh, the good thing with these kits that are coming through now is on the underside I mean that's one whole piece and that's whole one piece that slots in so you don't have there's a lot less seam work you're just you're just doing the spine and the and the upper cowling engine nose area and, you, and you're ready to go so I do notice I've forgotten to put the scoop the air scoop in or the oil cooler the other thing that isn't that whatever that is. So that one's um, on the go. Um, as soon as he's ready I think that's going to be a two-parter. That one might be a one-parter actually. I don't know. I don't think there was a lot of content. It was quite an easy build. Um, and then all of a sudden we had the review, what was it, uh, two weeks ago now. 
So pretty quick, we've got the Edward Spitfire already in primer. Um, I could actually go ahead with this one as it is, but the wing root, um, what is it? What, 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 are, what am I talking about? It's, the actual panel line is fine, but there's bits along the panel line where it's joined, if you know what I mean, which makes it look strange. Um, I was going to then fill it and rescribe it, but actually looking at the panel line next to it, there's no point really showing you because you won't be able to see it, but the, the wing root joins in, there's a panel line there and then a panel line at your wing, 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 wing root join. Um, it's actually the same thickness. So what I might do is where those two bits, it's, it's where the glue, the, the, the wing root and the fuselage have, it's gone like that, the glue's held it and then it's pulled apart so it's got a fine bit of plastic melted across so it's filling it. Um, I think all I really need to do is actually run through with the scriber and break through that. Which makes life a lot easier because again there's no more seam lines. Uh, the spine, well the, the the spine. the spine and the underside, uh, they're fine, extremely fine actually. At one point I haven't even sanded the rivets away. There was no work to do there at all. Of course we've got raised rivets all the way around the back of the fuselage here and on this spine. So it's very careful not to catch those because they're going to be a nightmare to put back in. But it doesn't matter getting out the recessed ones because we can just rescribe them. Uh, so things look all, all very good. I got my age old problem of trying to sight it up and um, I can never tell. I either get that, the tail plane is like that, or the tail plane straight and then the wing tips are kind of like... <laughs> Life's too short to worry about things like that. Um, all, overall, an alright kit. Um, detail wise, best Mark 1 Spitfire you're going to get, uh, but it ain't a Tamiya kit, that's all I'll say. You know, it's, it's what you get for the detail, you pay a little bit in the overly complex instructions and build, really. Uh, not disappointing, not difficult. I built this in about a week, so I mean, that's good going good guns for, a, for an aircraft, isn't it? So, you know, we're, we're talking minuscule things, but you've got to be picky with a state-of-the-art kit, I, I feel. So, there we are into primer. This will be a two-part, because there's a lot for the, the build of this. So, I may very well... Um, well, I'll get this filmed and edited. This is going to be the first one you get. That's what I mean. When you start seeing this go up, then there'll be staggered builds all the way through. So, um, bear with me on that. I hope to get that up. You're seeing this video now, so the week after this video. Um, if I get that into paint during the week, the on oncoming week, so if the Hurricane and the Spit get into paint, well then I'm, I'm away because I'm, I'm building these. Is very, well, the Hurricane actually is going to get battered to hell because the reference shows that. But the Spit is, um, I won't ruin the surprise yet, I won't until you see the video, but the Spit is going to be an extremely clean build. I won't tell you which version I'm doing. Um, so therefore, once it's painted, deckled, um, the weathering is literally just going to be a panel line wash and a bit of uh, pigment. So, if that's all the case, what I'm trying to say is you'll get that video and then the second part will be up the following week. I just want to give myself enough time there, you see. This is doing the same thing again, that I put it up and then you're waiting three weeks for me to finish it. This is what I'm trying to avoid. So, that's that and that's all the aircraft. Now, there aren't a lot of aircraft in the pipeline after that. And that leads on to the next thing. So um, I have kind of fallen in love again with armour. Um, those of you who know the channel well, know me since the start, you'll know I am an armour modeller. I've just gone away from it for a while. And you wouldn't know by looking at the channel. There's a bit of armour on there, but it's certainly not an armour channel. It's more an aircraft channel. Um, but it's been slowly happening over the last year, I suppose, it's the, the reason I went away is because I was into armor modeling when, um, like to build a Tamiya kit, you'd have to buy. So, if you're going to build a, a Tamiya Tiger, right? You, you go, I'm going to build a Tamiya Tiger, I'm going to go buy the box, get it out from the model shop, put it on the bench, build it, have the whale of a time. Well, I can do things like that. So, I, you know, I'd, I'd buy the Tamiya kit, which would be 30 quid, then I'd buy a set of metal tracks uh, which are the same price as the kit if not more 
So it's 60 quid, and then you buy a metal barrel, and then you've got um, then you've got an etch set. Before you know it, you know, a 30 quid kit is over 100 quid, and you're almost put off to build it because there's so much out there saying, you know, this is wrong, that's wrong, especially with something like a tiger. Um, so that's where I was getting, and that was happening with every kit, and I built German armour uh, solely, nothing else. Um, and the kits weren't really there. We basically had bog standard like Tamiya or Talieri, that sort of thing, or you had to go to Dragon, which again, it was quite cheap. It's amazing the kits that I used to get for like £12, £18, 22 quid, and now on eBay are like 75 quid, and all the bits I got in those ones that you paid for like 20 quid, they're all taken out of it. So that's oh, bizarre. I don't know, Dragon are just, I don't know what they're up to, but they need to sort of think about changing quickly, I would say. Um, so anyway, in the interim, we've had Hobby Boss, which is a great company for armour, really. I mean, they're, they're one of those in-betweens. You're a bit iffy sometimes, but generally, you know, you're getting Lincoln Length tracks, sometimes metal barrel, a little bit of photo etch, good details, weld seams, you know, weld lines. Everything's good so you know that happened and then all of a sudden now I mean you know the armour kits are just ridiculous You've, we've built the um, Ryefield model Sherman um, I've got my own views on the companies like Tacom, Ryefield model uh, you know everyone goes on about how great Tacom is uh, I don't agree the kits I've built are not good at all they're at the bottom of the new pile I would say everyone raves about them but my personal view is that um, I would say Ryfield Model and Meng are fighting for coming into a close second to steel. In my personal view, is if you get a new Tamiya kit, a new Tamiya armor release from sort of 2018 onwards, uh, you you know you'd have to. I think you've got a fair argument to say it's the best because other the, what what Tamiya lacks in detail, it makes up for so much in ease of construction that if you want to add the detail that comes in these other kits you can do it without the pain that it takes to do you know I mean look at the tracks on the Ryefield model Sherman Firefly that we did I mean that was, I did them but goodness me that was a weird way to go about tracks and you, you didn't need them you could have just done it with rubber band tracks of all things that was the one thing you could have got away with so that's how it goes on and you've got Zvezda picking up now we've done the review of Zvezda that Sherman picking up the bottom line you know looking at 20 quid doesn't have cast texture but it's got everything else so you think well you know it's, pretty, it's getting pretty good so that's started filtering back in from then also broken my um everything must be german and the tiger tank is the best tank in the world view of when i was a lot younger um and that's freed things up made things a lot more enjoyable as well uh, not having to do german armor although still predominantly my kit collection at the minute is German armour, but that's that's because I enjoy them for the right reason. So it's, it's, it used to be, you know, it's like tank's best tank in the world. Well, you could make an argument that it's probably the worst tank <laughs> of World War II. You know, you could go either way. So uh, there's a bit more sort of understanding from my point of view. And I am waffling on here, aren't I? Good Lord. I hope this is interesting, but this is what these are all about, waffling. So to cut the long story short, let's get back to where we're going. Um, I've got a lot of armour in the pipeline, so we're going to go down that route. That doesn't mean there isn't going to be aircraft, because um, it's a funny thing, modelling. I think if you're predominantly just an armour builder, or predominantly an aircraft builder, try building something else. If you don't want to build a tank, if you build aircraft, you don't want to build a tank because of the tracks, build a little car. You know, build, get, grab yourself like a little um, Kuba wagon, or a little Willys Jeep, something like that, and build that, because the kind of renewed enthusiasm you get back is is very useful I would say that's I, I, I've been building aircraft for a long time now predominantly and then going back into armor it's like how can I explain it see the aircraft build to me is quite difficult quite complex compared to an armor build so they're chalk and cheese, but it, it almost swaps over again when you get to the weathering. Because an aircraft, yes, you can weather it to, to hell and back, but generally it's more refined, it's not so much. 
and it's lighter techniques, more like oil washes and, and working with that with armour, then you go down the other route, you know, you, you make it quite dirty. So you can pick up a tank and build it and paint it over the weekend and you can get it into the base coat. But then finishing it and getting it over the finish line, you might then have a you know a week or two of weathering. So that's interesting if you like that side. I personally hate weathering, don't like painting, and love building. <laughs> Which is, seems to be completely alien to everyone else who tries to get through the build. Um, and I suppose the way aircraft are built as well, that's kind of my least enjoyable way to build, build a, a model where you've got to basically build a little model, paint it, finish it, then put that as the cockpit inside an aircraft, then you've got to build again, then you've got to finish it and, and so on. Um, Whereas the build from armour is lovely, you know, there's none of this, there's no, what are seam lines? What are, I mean, you know, you're worrying about weld seams. Well, if you have got a seam line, you can usually just cover it by stippling over cast texture, which is just fantastic. <laughs> Whereas, you know, you get something like this and the horror of having to get a seamless join and you think, oh my goodness. So, it, uh, it, it, it. A change is as good as a rest, is what I'm trying to say, um, and that's very apparent. And I, I've got, what have I done so far? I don't know, I think we've got about six. We've got one video complete, one video build, which is a tank build. And I think then there's another six pieces of armour that I've kind of built over two weeks. And they're all up to painted finished now going into like their final coat to then start weathering and then you've got aircraft as well so which I'm saying with the Spitfire and the Hurricane so it is it's it's interesting and it's um renewed my sort of love for it and then some of these kits as well that I'm finding little manufacturers I hadn't quite experienced before and um some kits I mean even some kits in airfix boxes I know they're reboxes but goodness me you know um some of those kits are, are absolute gems and there was a model I bought the other day. I'm going to show you this actually. So I'm going to show you this one because this isn't based on anything. This is this is for my um, collection. So I've been building, obviously buying quite a lot for my own collection. Uh, but some of it is for the videos as well. Now this kit, this was around when I was doing the rounds. I don't know how old this must be. 2000, it's got to be like 2000 and... It says 2012. But the honey... Uh, with the different turret, um, the original boxing must have been sort of 2002, 2003, because it was around when I was going to the the early shows, like the the original Bovington show and that sort of thing, and people were building it. So in here, you've got a full interior, a fantastic actual scheme. This this one in particular is um, a captured. It got captured uh, by the um, Germans at um, Kasserine Pears. It was take, took part in Tunisia and. Um, there's some great pictures of this one uh, captured, interestingly, which has track sag, because uh, these are tension track usually, so they're quite tight, hence why Sherman's, M. Stewart's, all that sort of thing, rubber bands are actually really good, because they're meant to be taut. Um, but then again, when the engine's off and then it loses that, the tension, then you get the track sag, so very interesting. Now in here, this is a heavy box, right? I, and again, I paid... £13 for this on Models for Hobby. Models for Sale. <laughs> models for Hobby. Models for sale .com. So this is a second hand kit. But even on their catalogue, it's 18 quid. And on this, you get. It's ironic, isn't it? I'm using this kit to explain why I've come back. <laughs> this kit was around in the time I'm complaining about. <laughs> um, never mind. It makes the point. <laughs> so you've got um, li uh, single link, they're not workable, but single link track. You've also got rubber band tracks. So you've got two types of tracks, full interior, great detail. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking about getting an etch set just because, well, because it was so cheap and because it's an old school Edward set that it's actually. Um, Uh, the big edge sets like 11 quid because it's the old school etch back when in the good old days of Edward days. Um, so I'm toying with the idea and a metal gun barrel. I think a metal gun barrel is needed because you, you just glue a little bit on the end to give you a hollowed out gun barrel but then you get a seam. So I don't know what the thinking was around that. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, so this has now been reboxed by Airfix. I think the honey version. So you're now getting those kits in Airfix boxes. So you don't always go everywhere and see an Academy box, but you can go in Hobbycraft now, find this box in an Airfix package. Um, might be a little bit more, 20 quid. Uh, but it's well worth it. That's what I'm saying. These things are around now. I would have discounted this back when I discounted it back when I was a young lad. Oh, I still am a young lad, sort of, but when I was a proper young lad. Um, so I'm glad to have found these things and, and got the love back. So that's what I'm saying. That there's there's armor now is getting a revival, much like aircraft is. But anyway, this incredibly long-winded waffling video, I, I'm, I hope this is of interest, I apologise if it isn't, um, basically means stay tuned to the channel because <laughs> it's going to have lots of build videos, a few little tips, tutorials, that sort of thing as we go through, but it's mainly going to be build videos, um, and I hope it's going to be of interest. Uh, there will be a good mix now of aircraft and armour going through, uh, and this does not mean, so the armour builds, doesn't mean that they're going to be metal tracks, etch metal, metal gun barrels. A lot of them are going to be out of the box builds, going to be um, looking at quite a lot of different things. But we're more on that, I hope to think, next month. I've got to get these, once these aircraft are staggered through, then we'll get into the armour. And then if there is any aircraft, we might sort of break it up as we go through. So, um... Thanks to everyone who's supporting the channel, stay in tuned, uh, subscribers are looking good, um, running on towards sort of 9,000 now, so that's fantastic, that's absolutely great. Hopefully when I get some more regular content up, might be able to build it, I'm hoping we can get to 10,000 subs by uh, Christmas, that would be nice. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Next video, which will be the reveal of the Wellington, so uh, stay tuned for that and um, there'll be more from me before you know it. So I'll see you in the next video.